day came. At least that is what they had told him. He had not seen the sun in years. He vaguely recalled its sparkling glow and warm radiance. It was all a distant memory. The door to his cell opened and he was dragged out by the guards. Dr. Stewart shook his head in disgust. Let me remind you, we do not condone the manhandling of prison patients. Prisoner, is that what he was going to say? That thought teased him as they walked through silver-lined halls. Eventually, they reached a maintenance elevator. That was the only known way down to the vaults. Unlike the clean and sterile surroundings, this lift stood in contrast. The descent into darkness began slowly. All he could hear was a screeching and rattling mesh. It pounded his ears, and in a futile attempt to drown it out, he clasped his hands over them. The elevator suddenly stopped. The doors opened, and patient 17 saw that the guards down here were heavily armed. With rifles and protective gear, the walls were also grey, suggesting that this place had existed long before the asylum above. He noted the low light and the dampness of the air. As they progressed forward, no one spoke. They soon reached what was the Shadow's Den. Guards were stationed above on the gangway that also led into some kind of observation area. The door slowly parted, and in the brightly lit room he saw the dark, cloaked figure. The room seemed brighter than needed to be. He could only just make out the tattered hood. The Shadow Man stood in one of the corners, staring at the wall. Patient 17, proceed to the centre, directly beneath the bulb. He did as asked. The room was terribly cold. It made him shiver, and as the door locked behind him, this was the moment he most feared. He tried to maintain calmness, but he could feel sweat pouring down his face. Testing in progress, announced Dr. Stewart. Suddenly, all light except that of the bulb above went out. It left him in the cold iron grip of darkness. I advise you, Seventeen, to remain in a circle of light. It is the only thing keeping you alive. He remained still, just making out two pairs of eyes, just staring at him. Why have you come? said the deep voice. I don't know. Are you the sacrifice? The voice was circling him. What are you? Like you. A prisoner. A laboratory experiment. You were human? Yes. The bulb flickered and died. Darkness swallowed him whole. A black hole of eternal nothingness that clasped onto him and threatened to tear him apart. He heard muffled voices, muffled cries, and the intercom system say it was entering lockdown. He still could not forget the eyes, empty of all emotion, and now as it wrapped around him, he felt his idle mind be lulled. He could move. But where? Darkness. It was thick and weighed heavy on his shoulders. It whispered sweetly in his thoughts. It promised freedom, fresh air, sunlight. Dreams long lost floated back. He felt joy and happiness. The bright light was sudden as the shadow left him lying on the cold, hard floor with blaring alarms. The door was partly opened. The robed man stood over him with white skin and bony fingers. To the patient's surprise, the man knelt down. I give you the one thing you desire most. Patient 17, who lay in the fatal position, could barely move, let alone answer. It is time to sleep now. 